Okay. Uh, also interesting, because we're gonna get back now a little bit to, to transport, and, to transport, and, the, yep. and the idea of, of how, do you, how do you know if something you've shipped has been shocked? There we go, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Today's, uh, today's product, and I'll show you a wide angle view of it, we'll get closer later, is a product called um, the G View from Shockwatch. It's the little red thing you see in the metal, metal um, in the middle of this black piece of metal. The Shockwatch uh, G View is actually this red thing. The purpose for it is one of the problems that we have when you ship delicate instruments. Let's say we ship something from here, like our video broadcast equipment, which we ship to remote sites. It gets there and maybe it's broken. Well, was it damaged when it was picked up at our loading dock? Was it damaged in transit when we ship via U FedEx or UPS or DHL or, or a regular uh, freight company? Was it damaged when it arrived at the other end? You don't know. All you know it was damaged. Shock labels will tell you that it was shocked, but they don't tell you when and where. This, the, the Shockwatch G View, and now we can go over to our, let me pop it under the camera here. Um, the Shockwatch G View does just that. This little device right here has an impact sensor in it that works in both X, Y, and Z axes. It also has a temperature sensor. Mm -hmm. And you can program this for limits so that if those limits are exceeded, then it will produce a timestamp, a date and time that is stored along with the temperature and the shock that experience that went beyond the limits. Now, we wanted to test this out, so uh, Daniel, if you can run a little B-roll here, and a little video. We were in recently at Hexagon Metrology in Rhode Island, just happens to be where Shock Watch is oriented, is, I'm sorry, is located, and so we said, hey guys, come out, install one of these things, we want to try it in our equipment and see how this puppy actually works. So you see I have it right there in my hand. First thing we needed to do is come up with a way to mount it inside our equipment, so we just came up with this little 19-inch uh, fill panel and we simply mounted the, uh, the, uh, the G View into the fill panel and then mounted the fill panel into our, our broadcast, uh, our broadcast uh, rack. And then, now the next thing we had to do was program the limits on this. So that was easy to do. Um, we went over to the laptop, uh, the representative from Shockwatch, set up the limits, downloaded the limits into a little, uh, little memory device, and then simply took that memory device over to the G View and transferred our settings, which included the current date and time, uh, the limits that we wanted to set for the um, the G-force that, that we wanted to be the minimum G-force that we would want to look at, and uh, temperature uh, temperature limits as well. Now we deliberately set the G-force really low because we actually wanted this to go off, and then we shipped it out FedEx like we normally do. Now. FedEx handles our equipment perfectly fine. We deliberately set the limits low so that we, we would see a shock. So we're not bad-mouthing FedEx here in case <laughs> anybody thinks we are. This, this would have gone off if we put it in our car, probably. Okay, so then we took it out of the fill panel and brought it to our office, and now that's what we're looking at right here. So the next step, and we can come over to our, our gauge cam here. The next step now is to transfer the data out of the shock watch into my, into my little memory device here. And I'll do that simply by holding this oop, to the G view. There we go there. And it, I get a little red light. Okay. Transfers the data. Now I'm going to go over to my screen share here and open up the G view software. And let me zoom into this so that you guys can actually see the tiny print that we've got here. Oh, hold on one second while I zoom. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see a thing I'm talking about. Okay, there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click my... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Left out one step. Come back to the gauge cam here. This is a little dongle that's attached to my computer via USB. I put the memory device in there. Now I'm ready to download the data from this memory device that already sucked the data out of the G view, and now we're going to download it into the laptop, come back to our screen share, I click my I button, and I click download, and I don't need to leave a note, I'll just say OK, uh, overwrite it, yes, overwrite it, OK. Now the data has been downloaded into my Shockwatch software, and we can see, center this on the screen, you can see on the left hand side, there's several timestamps. That is when either temperature or shock exceeded our limits. Now we set the temperature limits really high, so we never got a temperature, uh, 
uh, a temperature alarm, but we did get several shock alarms. You can see right at the very beginning, we have a 17G shock in the Z axis. And uh, then we had a couple of shocks in the X and Z axis. Now you say, well, why is this important? Why do I care? What can I do with this? Well, let's go back and let's look at, first of all, let's look at this uh, 414. Uh, April 14th at just after midnight, about quarter after midnight on the 14th, where we exhibited a really high shock, 27 G's in the Z axis, 16 G's in the X axis. I'm going to now pull up my tracking information from FedEx. Now remember, this was deliberately set so that they would go off. So again, I'm not bad mouthing FedEx here. But what can we see? If we look at our FedEx tracking, we can see that on April 14th, it arrived at a FedEx location in Wellington, Connecticut at 12.29 a.m. So 12.29 a.m. and our GView shock uh, software showed us that it experienced a heavy shock at 12.16. My guess is, is what happened is it arrived at FedEx. It was being unloaded from mm -hmm. the truck. That's typically loading and unloading is sure. where you get these shocks. This is when the stuff is kind of thrown at each other. It's mm -hmm. kind of jammed into the truck. This is where uh, stuff impacts each other, right? And it, that's probably where it was taken off the truck, mm -hmm. brought down, put onto the concrete before its arrival scan was done. So that's why these two times really, really line up. And by the way, I see the same thing when it arrived in, in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this kind of makes sense. We know that when it's being shipped, it's in the truck, it's pretty safe. These are all air ride trucks and stuff. Sure. Probably nothing going on there. It's when it reaches the distribution centers, that is when there, there's the chance that something might be dropped or uh, a, a lot of impact can happen. Now, here's what, there's, here's what was really cool. I sent this information back to the folks at Shockwatch and said, so give me a little interpretation. Now they did give me actually quite a bit of interpretation, but let's go to a slide here. Uh, they gave me run actually interesting little bit of information. This is part of the analysis. This is part of something that Shockwatch would do mm -hmm. for anybody. They wrote, wrote here, during loading, it appears the case was slammed up against other products with the primary force in the Z-axis and the secondary mm -hmm. force in the X-axis. In this instance, the zoom, case- Zoom out, by the way, Dirk. Is that? Zoom, zoom oh, out I'm sorry, I'm, I'm all zoomed in there, aren't I? Sorry, sorry about that, folks. Let, let, let folks read it. I'm read sorry, it. To, uh, sorry about to, that. Uh, to bust up on you, but I uh, wanted to make sure people could oh, read that. Read hold that on well. a second. Let me, <laughs> let me zoom out so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, okay, there we go. Go back. Uh, into, much better. A little back better. into our slide here. <laughs> hold on one sec. And we'll go back into our slide. Yeah, because this, this, uh, this uh, slide is actually, this there explanation is actually pretty important. Mm -hmm. um, uh, during loading, appears the case was slammed up against other products with a primary force in the z-axis, secondary force in the x-axis. In this instance, the case could have been forced up against other products on its wheels, or if it was laid down, which we know does happen, uh, on its side, it was dropped hard while being pushed up against other items. During unloading, the forces were primarily in the y-axis and secondary forces in the z-axis. Again, if it were on its wheels, the primary y-axis would have been a drop. So the thing that's really cool about this particular product is you do get this timestamp. Now, if you have to go back to the freight organization, you've got some proof. If there was any damage, for instance, sure. if the thing had got been damaged, I could have gone back to FedEx and said, look guys, we have this monitoring thing on there. You can tell from this exactly where this thing was mm -hmm. when it got damaged. It wasn't damaged on our loading dock, wasn't damaged when we rolled it into the office, it was damaged at a distribution center. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is actually another device similar to this, which not only gives you a timestamp, it has a built-in GPS. Oh, interesting. So you can actually monitor, well, number one, you can monitor in real time what's going on, but even if you are looking just at alarms, you know exactly where it was when the timestamp uh, when the timestamp occurred. So really interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is, when it comes to freight, I mean, all of us, particularly a lot of our, our large manufacturers, they ship really large pieces of equipment. Absolutely. Um, you know, met, uh, heavy medical devices like, mm -hmm. a, a, like a, a, a CT scanner mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, MRI unit sure. or, you know, uh, folks who send, you know, maybe some of our, our advertisers who ship CMMs. Sure. They're Tra shipped via truck, wherever, yeah. trade yeah. shows or whatever. This yeah. just gives you a really way, a good way to monitor what's going on. So interesting product. That's the G-View from Shockwatch. From Shockwatch. Yes, yeah. great stuff. Yeah, yeah it's, really. it's, it's, 
Pretty cool. It's actually interesting to be able to see what happened to our own equipment. That's right. And, yeah. and have a case study that we ourselves could do. That, yeah, and be able to yeah. align it. I yeah. mean, to me, what was fun is being able to look. Yeah, you can see this. these excessive, they weren't yeah. really excessive, but these excessive shocks yeah. happened in, guess where? The distribution center. Makes perfect sense. Sure, makes yep. perfect sense. Great. Yep. Good stuff. Well, thank you, Dirk, and sure. thank you, Shockwatch, for helping us with that. And uh, and we encourage you all out there with, with interesting, again, interesting applications. Yep. Send it along to us, either hardware or software. We'll get it on onto the show onto our, our Tech Corner segment. Okay. Well, 